Once the wolves got here, we really wanted a calm, quiet transition. They're on their own, um, off to uh, their own form of island adventure, and um, we look forward to moving forward with our partners with a successful reintroduction. Welcome to Animal Educate, my name's Abby, and today we're going to be looking at the wolves of Isle Royale. The Isle Royale National Park is located in the state of Michigan. It's an isolated, undeveloped island that can be reached only by boat or seaplane from Michigan's Upper Peninsula or from Minnesota. At 72 kilometers long and 14 kilometers wide, it's the fourth largest lake island in the world. The number of wolves on the island has fluctuated since the first population back in 1948. The availability of moose, which are the wolves' main food supply, as well as the introduction of canine diseases to the island, both influence population variants. Genetic inbreeding has also led to physical deformities and has at times resulted in low productivity and survival. Biologists have been researching the interactions between wolves and moose on the island for many years. In fact, the project is regarded as the longest running study on predator-prey relationships and it's paved the way for many other reintroductions. In 1948, during the winter, it's thought that wolves crossed from the mainland to Isle Royale on an ice bridge. This is when they're first thought to have inhabited the island. 1958 marks the beginning of the predator-prey study. In 1976, Isle Royale is given a wilderness designation by the Wilderness Act of 1964. This gave it more protection from development. In 1980, the wolf numbers peaked to about 50 animals. In 1982, the wolf numbers started to plummet and actually fell to around 14. This is because humans inadvertently introduced a dog disease. In 1996, due to low predation because of the decline in wolf numbers, the moose numbers began to peak. In 1997, due to the harsh winter conditions, the moose numbers plummeted down to around 500. In 1997, a male wolf crossed from the mainland from Canada to Isle Royale via an ice bridge. This wolf then bred with the wolves living on the island. This revitalized the pack's genetic diversity. In 2016, due to inbreeding, climate change and some other factors, only two wolves remained on the island. These were likely to be the last wolves on the island because they weren't able to produce viable offspring, so we needed human intervention. In 2018, the National Park Service announced their plan to reintroduce 20 to 30 wolves. So later on in that year, they released the first two wolves a four-year-old female and a five-year-old male. They were vaccinated and fitted with GPS collars. About a month later, another two female wolves were released. This brought the total to four wolves. In 2019, the GPS information showed that one of the recently relocated females left the island for the mainland via an ice bridge. Wolf reintroductions continued throughout 2019 and by the end of the year, there were about 19 wolves. Some had died during transit and some on the island, but the number was about 19. Then in 2020, two more wolves died. Uh, this was due to territory disputes. There were about 15 wolves estimated to be on the island. Then later on in 2020, some wolf pups were born. This marked the success of the reintroduction project. So what's the current situation? 
Well, the wolves, they're functioning as you would expect them to. They're hunting moose, they're mating, and they're defending their territories. So therefore, the wolf population, it's reached 28. And this is the highest it's been since 2006. There appears to be two packs, one occupying the main island's western section and the other on the eastern side. The moose populations are looking okay, but they have plummeted since the wolves' populations have started to increase. At the moment, they're at about 1,346, but their long-term average population is about 1,000, so it's looking okay at the moment. The gene pool may have occasionally been refreshed by the migration of other wolves, according to researchers, but as Lake Superior's surface starts to warm due to climate change, ice bridges are forming less frequently. This might make it necessary in the future for more mainland wolves to be relocated to the island to stop the inbreeding. So that's more human intervention. Also, another concern is as the moose numbers decline, it's whether or not the park vegetation will recover. If it doesn't, well, this means there's not going to be as many moose, and in the long term, that's going to impact the wolves. It's all a balancing act. So should we take measures to save the wolves of Isle Royale, or let the current population run its course, even if that means the population disappears? Well, one option is to simply let the wolves survive or die out without human intervention. Another is to let them die out and then reintroduce a new population. Or additional wolves could be added to the population now, providing more genetic diversity to the population. So each of those obviously comes with its advantages and disadvantages. <laughs> Any human intervention costs a lot of money and a lot of stress on the animals. So it's about always looking for the most simple and ethical solution. The existing wolves, they may thrive or they may disappear. Either way will have dramatic effects on moose and many other species on the island. Without top predators, prey will overpopulate and destroy the plants and trees that support lots of birds, mammal and insect species. The island's animal life has seen many changes in recent times. Some scientists think we should be focusing conservation funds to connect large expanses of land where there's populations of wolves and other wide roaming wildlife that can move freely and interbreed, like in national parks and public lands. Instead of trying to fight these natural processes like species disappearances on real islands, some believe that the study at Isle Royale should focus on how fauna and flora adapt, change and survive and disappear over time, instead of putting efforts into preserving the wolf populations. The point is to see what natural forces bring. Wolves, they're very opportunistic and they might continue to find a way to the island. And maybe the lynx will return, or a new species. On the flip side, the intervention at Isle Royale has provided scientists with the most influential long-term study of predator-prey relationships, and it's aided other reintroductions like Yellowstone. Look at the success of the wolf reintroduction at Yellowstone and what we've learned from wolves being present. So we do have to make these kinds of decisions. Conservationists will have to prioritize where investing in reintroductions or other extreme measures makes sense, and where letting a species disappear is more natural and maybe even the better choice. It's always going to be a difficult choice to make, but it always comes down to the ethical choice, making sure no wildlife is going to suffer because of decisions that us humans are making and also whether or not we are scientifically going to grow from this study. What will that research teach us? So what do you think? Should we take measures to save the wolves of Ariel, or should we let the population run its course? So that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed the episode about the wolves of Isle Royale. Please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and comment below if you have any questions. Also give the video a like if you've enjoyed it. 
Until next time.